Welcome friends. I am pleased to present to you the 2023 Volvo XC90. This is the B6 all-wheel drive model and it's pretty much fully loaded. We have here the Bowers and Wilkins and even the air suspension. So a model like this, this is going to be around seventy-five to seventy-eight thousand dollars. But me personally, I would probably just recommend getting a plus model, which is like the mid trim level, and that's going to run you around sixty-five thousand dollars. Still a well-spec model that's going to come with twenty-inch wheels, and there's no air suspension option on that particular one. The air suspension is only available on the top trim level uh, Volvo products. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about what this vehicle is, and let's talk about the exterior as well because the XC90 is about seven or even eight years old that is ancient in terms of car age but you would never know looking at this product that it's that old I mean the exterior and the interior it's flawless it hasn't aged a bit but it has such an elegant exterior presence to it I still enjoy seeing these things out on the road and I'll save the interior for the interior segment, but please let us know your thoughts regarding this XC90. Really what makes Volvo stand out for me amongst the competitors, it's the happy character that it has. Just about every Volvo I've ever driven it has such a happy and charismatic feel to it. There's a joy to it. There's nothing pretentious about it. And that's all fine, but it also has a genuine sense of quality when you uh, roll around in it. It does have that tank-like quality when you whip it around, but it's also really lightweight feeling. It feels very manageable, if you will. In fact, there's a few modes that you can put this XC90 in. You can stiffen up the steering more if you want, and you can also stiffen the suspension up as well. So this is the air suspension. They've done a good job calibrating the air suspension in this vehicle. In fact, another viewer of mine, he bought a XC60 in Europe, and he bought it with the Air Ride, and he absolutely loves it. He said it's a big improvement over the standard suspension XC60s. But since the XC90 is their flagship product, I bet they've done a fine job tuning the suspension even on the regular non-air ride model. So I'm not too worried about that. When I first got the vehicle, everything was in its softest natural setting. And I thought, oh, okay, this feels kind of ponderous and almost wallowy. And I thought, fine, that's kind of the character of it. But as soon as I put the suspension and the steering, especially in its stiffer mode or its sporty mode, it really did change the character of the vehicle without ruining the ride quality, even with these massive 21 inch wheels. Uh, but I do wish there was a way of getting this fully loaded trim with the smaller 20 inch wheels. I think that would have been perfect. But for the most part, this is totally fine. And because this is a 2023, this is literally one of the last model years, I'm assuming for the XC90. So this is the one that's been the most ironed out it's probably gonna have the least amount of issues with it so it's a good model to get and I have partnered with auto companion he can help you to get 9% off MSRP on literally every Volvo so I'll talk more about them towards the end of the video but from a comfort and a refinement standpoint this has truly been excellent for me it's very quiet even at the higher speeds there's not too much wind noise here the brakes are super touchy. I mean, you just breathe on the brakes and this thing comes to like an emergency halt. It's it's kind of hilarious how they have that tuned. Every Volvo feels like that regarding the brakes. After all, Volvo is known for the, um, the exceptional safety, right? So they really have those brakes calibrated to uh, bring this thing to a halt. And that's fine. I don't mind them tuning it that way. It makes it easy to modulate the brakes especially in city driving you just have to be super light on it and it's um it's easy to get used to but let's talk engines now so we have the b6 trim level one of the changes that they made for 2023 is they've added electrification one way shape or form to every volvo so what they've done with the b5 and the b6 is they have 
introduced a 48 volt mild hybrid system. But this B6, this is the crazy turbo and the supercharged two liter four cylinder engine made it to this eight speed automatic. Honestly, I, I really like this engine. It sounds surprisingly good for a four cylinder and most importantly, it's a smooth four cylinder. That's what I like most. It produces 295 horsepower, 310 pounds of torque, does zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. See, the Lexus RX that I tested last week, it came with a four-cylinder engine. I don't mind them using a four-cylinder if it's tuned to be smooth and refined like these European four-cylinders, like in the Volvos, the Audis, and the BMWs. That's okay. And I like the way this helps you to surge off. This feels a lot quicker than what the numbers would suggest. And you can be doing like 20 miles an hour over the speed limit and not even notice it. So that is a pretty dangerous aspect about this XC90. It really masks the speed from you. But this is all I require out of a four cylinder. Granted, they did it in a ridiculous way. They you know, put a supercharger and a turbo on it. This is literally a lease only vehicle. I would not touch this thing outside of a warranty. You lease it and then you dump it. That's it. That's your relationship with these Volvo products. You know, these are fine vehicles. I enjoy driving them. They feel expensive. But the reason why this engine is so good is you always have torque available to you. So you're always surging off effortlessly. Okay, the eight speed automatic, it's calibrated extremely well. You always get the right gear. There's a subtle delay when you initially uh, step on it, but that's okay. I'm not expecting a PDK or anything like that here. This is all I want and this is delivering. This is one of the finer four cylinder experiences I've had and it was a concern for me because I was always curious about this insane engine that Volvo has here. Um, how this turbo and the, and, and the supercharger would work together if it would be seamless and I'm pleased to tell you that it is. But granted this is a 2023. This is the newest one. I have no idea how the older uh, XC90s are programmed or tuned. When you uh, take sharp corners in this, there's not too much body roll here. So nobody's being flipped all over the place. So that's good. But of course, this lacks the sharpness in terms of handling that the BMWs and the Audis will typically have. And that's fine. I don't care. The way this SUV is set up is perfectly fine. So, I mean, you can, you can throw it in here. It has like that understeer tendency to it, but yeah, this engine, it's really hauling. I, I really like this B6. its I think it's worth stepping up to this B6 over the um, regular B5 turbo four cylinder. I think this engine, it's pretty great, but yeah, the handling is okay for everyday driving, okay? As long as you're not driving it like a total doofus, I think you're gonna enjoy this. So yeah, overall, I'm a pretty big fan of driving this machine. It feels good. It's pretty much in the class and in the realm of something like the Audi Q7. It has like a similar quality to that, which is pretty high praise, especially since the Q7 I recently tested. That was a uh, the, the V6 model, actually. And this is pulling pretty much just as hard, has a similar type of refinement and quality to it when, it, when you drive it. And I would say the only real cons with this, I mean, I feel like the ride quality could be just a bit smoother. If they just used the uh, the 20 inch wheels, I think that would have been perfectly fine. And put some continental rubber on it, I think that would be a very smooth experience. And the only other thing is, as I mentioned, <laughs> with this engine setup, you definitely want to just lease and dump it. That's the best way to own this. This isn't something that you buy and you keep it for like 15, 20 years. That's not what this is. It has a more disposable nature to it. So enjoy it when it's brand new and get rid of it later. So that's kind of my advice for you. Let's go ahead and let's transition over into the interior segment now. Okay, now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and cover this interior space. This is pretty much the same or if not very similar to the other Volvo products that I have tested, which means we have a nice sturdy space here, excellent material choices and quality. I love the 
way they break up the various leathers, the metal, and the woodwork here. It just feels like a premium, exquisite, almost like a six-figure interior space. That's what I love about Volvos. And you don't have to step up to this XC90. Even the lower models like the XC40s and 60s feel nice and look good as well. The seats are extraordinarily comfortable. We even have this massaging function, which is fantastic. It kind of pushes you on your back and your pressure points. The biggest con for many people, of course, is this infotainment screen. Sure, it's beautifully implemented. It looks nice. I like how it's not just sticking on top of the dashboard, but pretty much all of the climate control, it's embedded into this touchscreen. And it's just something you're gonna have to get used to because all the Volvos are like this. This is a Google infotainment, but it does come with Apple CarPlay now. However, you have to use your cord and plug in your iPhone for the Apple CarPlay to work, but at least they have it here. Everything else about this, I don't really mind. I will say the, uh, the settings menu, it's a little bit difficult to go through all of this. You really have to be stationary in order to use this. Um, that's just something that you should be doing anyway in every car, but definitely in this Volvo. Make sure you have everything set up the way that you want it before you set off. Other than that, you do have a few physical controls for your volume, your track selection, your window defrosters. Yeah, of course, that's that's important. So they don't embed that into the touchscreen. So they gave you the buttons for that. I do like this uh, glass crystal shifter. It's a nice touch. The stop start, that's pretty elegant. And you have an okay amount of space in the armrest and you have a bit of space between the cup holders and this whatever we have going on in the front here. I'm digging the two-tone steering wheel that's pretty nice with this blonde leather that's what they call it and you have a 12 inch digital gauge cluster that looks pretty good shows you your mpgs i'm getting about 20 in the city and that's exactly what this vehicle is rated for 20 in the city and i believe 26 out on the highway mpg not too bad for a big machine like this weighs around 4700 pounds so i like how powerful this engine is and the fuel economy not bad either the other thing with this particular model we have the bowers and wilkins audio system this is an excellent audio system however even the harman kardon sound system that volvo offers that's also excellent i would probably just stick with that this is a 3400 dollars option so i would personally just save the money but this is good though the doors feel nice and sturdy when you open and close them we have this big pano sunroof and in the rear we have plenty of legroom. I am five foot 11. It is very easy for me to get in and out of this SUV and to fit in the back. You have your own climate control back there as well as your own heated seats in the back. This model also comes with the rear manual sunshades. The third row is pretty much useless the way that you see it here. This is a seven seater and this is definitely the way to go because I believe getting the captain's chair in the second row costs a lot of money so that is not worth it in the xc90 i would just get this as a seven seater and i would just fold down the third row seats i mean you're definitely not putting adults in the third row that's for sure so when you fold down the third row you have a ton of space in this suv so i think that's the best way to utilize this i mean if you're cross shopping this with like a bmw x5 I guess this would be the more practical machine. You have more leg room in the back and you have a lot more trunk space if you fold down the third row. So that's the overall interior space. I guess we can touch on the safety. To be fair, I know Volvo, they're known for safety and all that, but pretty much every other car company, they've stepped up their uh, safety game. I mean, BMW, Lexus, Mazda, Honda. I mean, like every car company is extremely safe now. So safety is not just bespoke to Volvo, but I will say all the safety tech in this Volvo product works exceptionally well. There's no weirdness with it. And as you expect, it does extremely well in a crash test. This is a IIHS top safety pick plus. So you don't have to worry about that. Your family is gonna be extremely safe when traveling in the XC90. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's transition into the conclusion segment. Okay, so to wrap everything up, I am a pretty big fan of Volvo. They make some great products that I really appreciate. I feel like their vehicles kind of hit above their weight class. They feel more premium than what the price tag would suggest. That's always a great thing. But as I mentioned before, definitely a lease and dump machine. I am partnered with Auto Companion. He can help you to get 9% off MSRP. However, when I put all the numbers in for like a $65,000 XC90 
plus into Auto Companion's free leasing calculator. The numbers I got, it was about $800 a month with the discount with the $1,000 or $1,500 incentive for leasing. Uh, all that put together, zero money down, assuming you have perfect credit, leasing an XC90 is gonna be like $800. And to lease a fully loaded model like you see here, $75,000, $78,000, this is gonna be an extra 100 bucks a month, around $900 a month. So that's pretty much in line with the BMW X5 and the Audi Q7. In fact, this is around $100 to $200 cheaper per month than an X5 or a Q7. It's unfortunate that leasing prices are just so expensive now, but this is kind of the payments that you're looking at, which all things considered, it's not terrible because this is a massive vehicle at the end of the day. Even the um, Lexus RX 350 that I tested last week, even that's going to lease for around $750 a month. So test drive it, make sure you like it. But yeah, a plus model, 65 grand Harman Kardon audio system, 20 inch rims. I think that's a pretty excellent vehicle and good value proposition. There's also the recharge model available and a well-equipped recharge model was around $75,000. That thing is a rocket ship. It does zero to 60 in like four and a half seconds, but I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, availability is on that. Like if you're going through Auto Companion, uh, you could ask them about that. I'm not sure if the same 9% off will apply to the recharge. But again, ask him, see if he has something available. But for the most part, I think this regular B6 trim level of the XC90 will be good for most people. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Auto Companion, they are located in the Washington DC area. Now there is a $600 broker fee, but if you sign up with my affiliate link in the description box, you can get $100 off of that broker fee. And they can ship nationwide, but that's something that you will have to pay for, which I don't think many of you will mind since the discounts are so high you're getting like six to seven grand off on these new volvos and that's definitely the way to buy them because the resale value of these is not great so it's imperative that you do get a great discount and you take advantage of those manufacturing incentives so with that established i will have my next video on the end screen here click on it and i will see you there